So they've updated the racial uh, pages or whatever on the WoW website. Yes, the humans have changed. Mm -hmm. Have they changed? I just noticed this ain't Stormwind. No, it ain't. That's Lordaeron. Yep. But you don't get it. It's the Crest of Courage. Ah, interesting. <laughs> so anyway, there we go. They, they've changed these things. Yeah. Um, can we please, as night elves, be able to wield our ancestral signature weapon that's shown in our crest? Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Oh, look, it's a happy Dakor. It's a happy Dakor. Cool. That's not a happy Dakor. That's um, a sarcastic Dakor. Oh, he's always happy. He's never. So, loves, okay, we've we've got the Draenei page. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I recorded a video on this yesterday, so that'll be on the channel oh, next so week, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Matt, take it away. Reveal to us one of the next two expansions, probably. It's definitely not this. No, it's not this one. It has to be eleven. It has to be eleven point zero. But yeah, that's it. Velen believes that a great war between the darkness and the light is fast approaching, and that Azeroth will be its principal battleground. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> to be honest, everyone's known this is coming. It's been coming since realistically since tbc it's definitely been coming since tbc but legion really hammered it home because all of the stuff we did with the now all the stuff with zero all the stuff with the light and the dark and the child of light and shadow and all that stuff was opened up massively and then they went we'll do bfa now which obviously felt like a little bit of a break from the great ending to the legion saga the whole you know the story that started in Warcraft, uh, I guess Warcraft 1, about the Burning Legion? Yeah, the end of that in Legion, I'm sure you remember. So, the next big thing was then the Light and the Void. The other, there's kind of like, honestly speaking, if you look at World of Warcraft as or Warcraft as a whole, there's always been two kind of, you know, major existential plot threads, the Legion and then the Light and the Void. At least since Warcraft, since the Void was introduced in the Old Gods and stuff, and then TBC did more of that. So it was obviously going to be coming. But now Velen's always believed this light and void war is happening. But the thing that's interesting about this light and void being, you know, light is the darkness is light and fa fa <laughs> darkness and the light is fast approaching, and Azeroth will be the principal battleground. That means that the light and void will happen on Azeroth eventually. So the light obviously makes us think of Urel. And the invasion. Urel, the Lightbound, all that shit that they hinted at in the Makar Orc quest. Then we've got all of the Void stuff from, you know, basically everything. The whole Emerald Nightmare stuff. We've got everything that Zoth was doing. We've got Zalatath. Also, yeah, that's a Shadowbringers is this thing. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> they're definitely not aping. It's definitely, it's been the thing where they've had all of these same fantastical things at the same time. I mean, there's so many things that are dealing with progenitors at the same time recently. You know, you've got, like, Marvel's Eternals, you've got, you know, you've got F-14, you've got, we're all doing progenitor stuff. But the Light and Void is just something that's coming up. But it's definitely going to be 11.0, I think. What are you looking for? Oh, just looking at water. Oh, nice. Well done. Yep. Yeah, so, there's nothing, not a whole bunch to learn, except for the fact that we are, in fact, going into this shit next. We're just going, it's Light and Void time now. And it's light and void at the same time as opposed to separately. Everyone expects there to be a light expansion or mm. a void expansion, but it's very clearly that they're setting up for it to be both. Yeah. Which, nice. uh, that'll be fun. Yep. It'll be fun seeing those, you know, as they're sort of personified in loads of characters that, uh, you know, that we know. Yeah. Are kind of interesting uh, things going on. Uh, Forsaken and Night Elf Capitals. Yeah. Wow. Oh, the wondrous wow. city of Darnassus lay nestled in the boughs of the massive world tree. Sadly, the tree was attacked at the start of the fourth war and fucking destroyed. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's that's it. But hey, if that new expansion leak is true, then we get to help regrow the fucking city, and that'll be really cool. I'd love that. Yeah. Please, let's do that. Please, please. And also, like, let orcs do it. You know, let orcs help mm. the night elves. Um, and or maybe that would be a bit tricky for the lore. Mm. But you know, something yeah. where like horde players could be able to chip in, maybe not super directly, but like yeah. have a little thing there thematically, so we, that you know it's we, like <laughs> we whip around like. Yeah, hey, I, 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 oh, that's tricky because I mean, 
Yeah. You know, look at that. You could understand an orc really wanting to get there, you know, to help. But yeah. it's like, could you ever understand an alliance person trying to be like, ah, yes, the Undercity, cool. I'll help rebuild it. Yeah. Oh, makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Quasar's in Event Horizons. Woo. Wow, well, well, we were. I watch pop science videos on YouTube. Yeah. Now they're in our game. Here's what fucked me off unbelievably about this, everyone. Okay, so this is called Grim Eclipse. Manifest a quasar which orbits your target, blasting it with cosmic damage over 15 seconds. Upon expiration, the quasar collapses, creating an event horizon for 15 seconds. It grants you haste. Is that a new type of damage, cosmic? I'm right. Who the Does fuck? That matter? Who knows? Here's the thing. It's like, oh, great. What did I just do? I summoned in a quasar. What did it give me? Oh, plus 15 haste. Mm -hmm. That's a bit silly. But I would say just there's a bit of world building that got me here. Hmm. Dude, Quasar is a word from our world, created by our scientists. And I get it. The characters in this game, they speak often English or, you know, whatever game or whatever the game is localized into, I suppose. But, you know, they're using like human language. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, oh, you have to say frack instead of fuck. Or you have to say yalms and malms and milms and malms and flams and whatever, like they do in FF14. But yeah. it's just like... Are we really going to call it a quasar? Is Azerothian astronomy like that? You know, th there could be a way to be like in your head. Okay, so this is totally a quasar. This is totally, uh, you know, an event horizon. But then the thing is like, how do the astromancers or whatever, what do the, those people in our world think of that? What do they call it? How do they understand it? Is there a way that we can take a concept that really exists and work out how we can like make it more fantastical or work out, you know, how do these Azerothians interpret this sort of thing? Because I think that's yeah. where you can have a rich cosmology that feels very grounded in a virtual world. Yes. Instead of just sort of borrowing loads of human -y, um, yeah things. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's my point. <laughs> yeah, no, I, was, I, was, I was literally stuck thinking about how FF deals with not the same things but you know kind of vaguely similar things of oh well this is a little bit different but we're going to give it our name and then there was obviously you know uh, someone had in chat the fact that they say star instead of planet a lot of the time mm. it's just a little, small little thing obviously the star is the same word but you know nouns you gotta gotta give them something there but yeah i mean like imagine watching Battlestar galactica instead of cubits they're using dollars <laughs> yeah okay that's super on the nose because you know what i mean yeah uh um, yeah you, you'd like to think there's at least some explanation for all of these concepts but this is very clearly hey we're speaking to the player yeah we're speaking to the player we're like uh, that doesn't that you feels like a bit of a lost uh lost opportunity, opportunity at least yeah. um Indeed. okay raid boes so uh there will once again be two boes per armor type uh from the trash and the sepulcher mm. same as there was in this tier most of these share a slot with a tier piece, so rather than being best the entire patch, they'll be an intermediary thing. So as such, they will theoretically be cheaper overall because they're designed to be replaced, but of course they'll be expensive at launch. So there you go. Also, the Hall of Fame titles have been updated. Yes, so now it is the famed slayer of Zoval the Jailer. Good. Just in case you weren't aware that he is the Jailer. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, so this is probably just emphasizing that we do indeed kill Zoval at the end, as opposed to just defeating him. <laughs> Moving on then, we have Blizzard update posts. So they have an update on the Mythic Raid testing. Um, yep. Oh, so this means that after January 21st, 9 out of 10 Mythic bosses will have been tested. We'll be opening up normal testing for the whole raid minus Zoval over that weekend. So, late February. Yep. Blizzard have an update in the solo shuffle. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they say thank you for providing feedback. A lot of the issues you brought up are important to us. Uh, part of the reason we elected to implement this feature as a brawl first was to discover issues like the one you described firsthand and iterate a bit on uh, our solutions to these problems. Sweet. Uh, with respect to people leaving early, <laughs> yeah, this is certainly a big threat and they have a twofold plan. If somebody leaves a match early, all rounds will be resolved as if that person lost every round. So that person will get 0-6 while other participants will get 3-3. Three, three. If the mode is raided, this will be extremely bad for the person who leaves the match early and essentially a wash for everyone else. In the case of an unrated brawl, we don't plan to reward anything to someone who leaves the match early. Second, hefty deserter penalties. 
uh, that are going to stack with repeat departure. So the first one will be 15. Subsequent early departures within, say, 24 hours might increase, or well, they say will increase the duration by five minutes. We need to provide some grace for the occasional internet disconnect, but repeatedly leaving matches is a detriment to everyone. When it comes to tanks and solo shuffle, prop paladins have a distinct advantage because of the potency of their off healing. The current plan is to have prop paladins only match up against other prop paladins, while other tanks can square off against each other. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I get it. That's pragmatic. Um, finally, when it comes to rewards for the brawl version of solo shuffle, we're planning to make it pretty efficient when it comes to honor. When available, solo shuffles will be the most efficient way to earn honor for patch 9.2. Should be. Should be. Interesting. Hmm. Also, avail <clears throat> oh, this is great. Availability will be independent of the rest of the brawls in 9.2, including its own button on the PvP pane. Good. Great. So it's there as a whole patch feature. I'm happy with that. Very good. Then uh, they have a 2022 esports plan. Mm -hmm. um, so live on-site events. I think that's pretty cool. Targeting a in-person summer back. 2022. More news as time goes on. So good news uh, there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm a pretty big esportsy. Yeah, it's nice that they haven't. Uh, you know, it's nice that they haven't went. Eh, this is uh, this is too expensive to run. We must kill them. Uh, like they, you know. Did with hearts. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, it's nice that this stuff keeps happening. Yeah, so there's could separate. be could be could be worse. There's at least you know, at least some parts of the player base are still getting to have things. That I honestly surprised. Yeah, no, so that's that's all good. Um, yeah, of course, MDI going to continue. Um, they're bringing the Great Push back. They'll be conducting a multi weekend mini season, the Great Push, uh, with another two hundred and ten grand in pricing. So. Like sports going on, continuing, which is all good stuff. Yep. Then there's the classic arena tournament, the Cat. They're uh, bringing that back for a third season with a heightened bounty of a 100k prize pool. Next, then we have a WoW Community Council update. Uh, yep, so they want an update in that and the progress uh, with the over 10,000 applications. They are working hard to give all applicants a fair consideration as they determine the next wave of invites. Updates will be shared once things are finalized. Team has hit the ground running in 2022 with the PTR. Mm. The impact has already uh, helped uh, push along some new conversations. Yeah. Uh, things like asking how shards of domination will change with the patch, along with pushing to know more about the tentative uh, raid testing schedule for the new raid. So about some additional topics. Um, also stuff there for classic with the gnomish battle chicken trinket and uh, difficulty for Black Temple and Hijal. And they say they're closely watching what council members are most actively discussing and there'll be more updates to come. Yes. There you go. Very good. The con the yeah, I feel like the community council certainly being a little bit um, underutilized at the moment. I'll say that much. I looked at it the other day and I was like, it, I don't want to say this because it might actually be just a bit rude or misconstrued, but it seems like there's not an awful lot of Blizzard response to the more difficult questions yet. Which obviously is, is a matter of them working on the patch and it's going to take time to solve them, but it certainly seems like they may have pushed the community council. Maybe they're just hoping to have it sort of slightly running, slightly running, and then when they can amp up or ramp up the acceptance rate mm. or the, the the going through applications, maybe it'll be a, a lot heavier kind of engage with. But it does seem a little bit like a ghost town and maybe they just haven't had the resources to keep up with it. Or, you know, none of the devs have time to go, well, I can spend a day really engaging with it yet because they're too busy working on the, <laughs> the content. 